Hi guys, it's Greasy with Small World's Big Adventures, and today we have a tabletop DIY. In our current campaign, we have this ongoing thing that has to do with runes and having the players find these runes and they'll fit into puzzles. And so today I'm going to walk you through how we made those for our table. To start off, we started with making a salt dough. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what a salt dough is, it's a great little craft uh, that you can do ornaments with or other decorations. You can color the dough. Um, but here I added one cup salt to two cups flour. Then I took one cup of water and I added acrylic paint to the color and consistency that I wanted. You could use food coloring, but I wanted these to have kind of a terracotta feel. And so I just went with some like uh, muted gold to mix into the dough. Once I had the water and paint mixed together, I added it to my bowl um, and mixed the flour mixture with the water. Um, I would say in general, it's probably gonna be fine if you use your everyday kitchen stuff, but if you're worried about it, maybe use your cheaper non-baking bowls. Once it seems like it's mixed pretty well, I would move it to your counter or your table or wherever you're going to be kneading it. And then you just kind of keep mixing it until it's got a good consistency. Uh, this is a good time to kind of determine if maybe you need more flour or if you need more water. If it's real sticky, it should not be sticking to your hand. Just keep adding flour until it's kind of past that. Um, however, if it's crumbling it apart, then you probably need more water. And by more water, I mean just a few drippy drops at a time. Again, um, once it's all mixed together, it should feel like Play-Doh. Now, if you're busy and you want to do the rest of this later, you can put this in the fridge and it should stay good for about a week um, but if not you can start with the next part now and that's rolling the dough um, you kind of want to smush it into a thick little patty to get started and then cover it with wax paper and then use a rolling pin or if you don't have that like a jar works just fine um, and roll it out until it's between a quarter of an inch to a half an inch thick. Again, depending on what you want for your project. Now, using the salt dough that's been rolled out, you're gonna cut, or cookie cut even, the shapes you want out of it. I want mine to feel like little uh, clay tiles that they found, so I'm literally just doing little rectangles, um, you could 100% use a ruler, but here I am using just the side of a spatula I have to get straight-ish lines um, and should cut them out. If you're finding as you're playing with the dough that it's soft and not really easy just to pick up, one, you could add more flour, but you can also put your rolled out dough in the fridge and it should hold its shape pretty well. Once I have my final shapes, I move them over to the baking sheet that I'm going to be baking them on. Now, you could bake these right now and then design them afterwards, either by drawing or painting on them. But I wanted the tablets to feel like somebody had actually, once upon a time, etched or carved into them. And so uh, before baking, um, I took, in my case, a dental utensil. Um, but you could use a toothpick or a knife or anything you can have lying around to etch in my symbols for these tablets. So if I could offer a piece of advice, if you're going to be etching stuff into it, what you really want to do is press into the dough instead of actually like cutting through it. When you cut through it, you kind of get crumbs that come up and it can be hard to get a smooth, clean line. Whereas pushing down into it tends to give you a crisper image. Now that our tablets have their etchings in them, I preheated the oven to 200 and then slid them in to the oven. Now, 
depending how long you want to cook them really depends on how thick your tablet is. And if you're doing ornaments, how thick your ornaments are. The thicker they are, the more time you want them to spend in there. 200 is not like a very high degree. It will be really hard for you to, if you will overcook these. Um, so I would lend it to the longer side. For these, which mine were closer to probably a half an inch thick, I did an hour in the oven and then I flipped them over and then did another hour. Um, if you pull them out at the end of it and you're looking, you're like, I don't feel like these are dry, um, which is the point <laughs> is getting them dry. Uh, go ahead and put them in longer. Once they're done baking, they're probably going to be lighter in color um, and hopefully with nice crisp designs in them. Uh, but now you can either A, consider them done or um, if you're like me, you can ink them and dry brush them. So to ink them, uh, just take a little acrylic paint and water it down so it's good and liquidy. And I would just like gently lay your brush into the crevices. Um, with different materials, you wouldn't have to worry about it, but this is dough, so it's really absorbent. So you wanna try and keep the uh, inking wash to the areas that you want it. That should already go ahead and make your etchings pop, um, as well as like bring some color to the table. But if you wanna make them pop just a little bit more, I would take a light color. Here I'm using white, and this is not watered down. This should not be watered down at all. And you'll want you to doing? put some on your brush and then honestly try to wipe a lot of it off. And then just very carefully, just gently over the top, add it to the areas that you want it. Uh -huh. um, if you have too much, then you might go over um, your inking stuff, which you don't want, you sound very but it should just delineate that shape just a little bit more. That's what uh, if I could change one thing blue. about this, I probably wouldn't have gone with white. I maybe would have gone with a light tan or something to just mirror the um, terracotta feel of these pieces. Uh, but the white definitely pops and it definitely helps distinguish the images. And once those are dry, you have your little tablets with your runes to give your players clues and hints to many puzzles to come. I really hope you guys liked this DIY for our tabletop. Uh, we can try to make uh, our table come as live as much as possible. And I love doing these little DIYs. If you want to see more DIYs, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you enjoyed seeing this, drop a like. Um, I would love to hear down below what tabletop DIYs you have done. Um, or if you have any questions about this process, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, hit that notification bell and you'll be notified next time we upload. If there's nothing else. We'll see you next time.